The Holy Gospel for this day is from the Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 38. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted with many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. I would like to center with you on this one story today, the gospel lesson. It's a familiar story. It's the story of Mary and Martha. It's familiar enough of Martha who is ever busy and Mary who sits at the feet of Jesus. But remember for a moment that every story that you hear, especially sacred stories, they sound different depending on, on your context, depending on what's been going on in your life. Uh, the prodigal son story sounded to me in one way as a young man, in a very different way when I became the father of uh, three, uh, again different as a grandfather. The Easter story became very different, sounded very different after my father passed away. So this story, take a moment to prayerfully consider your life situation this morning. What is happening around you, in your church, in your family, in your profession? And then listen for the Word of God this morning emerging from this sacred story for this time in our lives. Let's pray. Creator God, you know each of us. You watch us from the day of our birth, through all the changes and chances of life, through all the ups and all the downs too. Speak to us as we gather this day as human beings, as people of faith, as church. May these words of my mouth and the meditations and imaginations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. So the context of the story in the Gospel of Luke it is important. The Gospel narrative, the Gospel narrative in Luke begins with familiar threads. It begins with Jesus being born of Mary in a stable in Bethlehem. He is baptized by John and begins his ministry. He begins his ministry in Galilee, in the north part of the province. And early on, though, there are two broad aspects of his ministry it's important to remember. Part of it is to remember Jesus' own ministry, his own personal ministry. He brings healing to people. He brings healings, healing to their body, to their mind, to their spirit. Besides acts of healing. He also brings healing in his teaching. He teaches people about what God is like. He says, when you pray to the Creator God, start like this, Papa or our Father. He teaches them about what's important in life and what's not important in life. In life. The second aspect of his ministry, though, is not his personal ministry, but the ministry of calling together a community. He calls disciples, students, to follow him. The mission of Jesus is not, not a one-man band. He has come to gather a community. And Jesus is still gathering that community today. That's, that's why we're here. In the first weeks, he calls together one by one the 12, Peter, James, John, Thomas, and all the rest. Some of these were fishermen. Some of these were tax collectors. One was zealot. One was a zealot, a revolutionary. They were from all walks of life, yeah? But it didn't end there. On the journey, chapter 8, hear this. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and, inf and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward Shusa, and Susanna, and many others, who provided for them out of their resources. So already in the gospel, this community of Jesus is not just the 12. There are women, named women, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Susanna, who are part of this Jesus community. And then in Luke 10, Jesus calls 
70 others and sends them out ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he's intending to go. So this, this building of the community is part, a very important part of the context in the Gospel of Luke. Okay, now to our text. The text begins, now as they went on their way. Who were the they? Well, Jesus' church, the 12, the women, um, the 70. So the text reads, He entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Welcomed him into her home. The text doesn't mention who else is invited into her home, whether which of the 12 go along with Jesus or which of the women go along with Jesus or which of the 70 go along with Jesus. But I think as we hear the story, we begin to understand that Martha's kitchen contains all of those and all of us and all of the followers of Jesus in all times. It's a crowded kitchen that day, a full house. We are all there listening and watching. Martha welcomes Jesus under her roof. I wonder if she might be the older of the two sisters. It's her house. It's her kitchen. It's Martha's kitchen. In any case, she welcomed Jesus into her home. It reminds me later of a, of a story in Luke when Jesus encounters, you remember the little tax collector named Zacchaeus, who was wanting to see Jesus, so he climbed up in a tree because that's the only way a short guy was going to be able to see through the crowd. And Jesus notices him and says, remember what he says? Zacchaeus, come down, hurry, because I am to stay at your house today under your roof. Mary, Martha rather, welcomed Jesus into her home. I wonder what welcoming Jesus into our homes looks like today. We learned a table grace growing up and it stuck somehow. It's one that continues to be part of what our family uses. You might know it well. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, we say at table. Simple little prayer, but a profound prayer. One that says Jesus is welcome in our home, our guest in our home. Reading the scriptures, meditating them, is one, meditating on them is another one of the ways that, that we welcome Jesus into our home, I think. When you take a moment to pray, or when you go to church together and bring those learnings back to talk about in our homes and to practice. Martha welcomes Jesus into her home with all that means. Then the text reads, Martha had a sister named Mary. As it happens, Mary had not welcomed Jesus into her home. Martha had. But when Martha invited Jesus into her home, guess what? Her sister, Mary, meets Jesus as well. That happens a lot, doesn't it? I think I'm in the church today because of a faith community a hundred years ago that cared for my grandma and grandpa at the loss of their, their first child, an infant child. And so the gospel was shared with, by that community, with that mother and father, and then with other mothers and fathers and children down the line to me. The way that, that's the way it often is with Jesus, isn't it? It's less, it's less about meeting Jesus in our heads through some argument, but more through someone who has already welcomed Jesus into their home. Uh, author Madeline Lengel writes this. She says, when it comes down to it, I'm a Christian because of my aunt who lives in Teacup, New Jersey. Jesus was important to the aunt, so he becomes important to the niece. And so it goes. And so it was with Mary and Martha. The text continues. Mary sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. Mary sat down in Martha's kitchen and was drawn by the teaching of Jesus. The profound words of Jesus, the life-giving words of Jesus, like this. Um, the kingdom of God, he would say, the dream of God is like a sower who goes out to sow. Most of the seed is lost, but that one grows and becomes something beyond any, any human imagination. Or this, don't be anxious about what you are going to eat. Does not God feed the sparrows? Don't be anxious about what you're going to wear. Are not the lilies of the field which do not, do not toil, are they not clothed wonderfully? And will not your heavenly Father so care for you? Or this, 
You ask me what God is like? Well, listen. There was a father who had two sons, and you know that story. Mary was fixed on the gospel of Jesus. She hung on every word. And then the text continues. Martha, who, Miss Martha, after all, who had welcomed Jesus into her home in the first place, was distracted with many tasks. She was setting the table for Jesus in her kitchen. She was preparing food. She was practicing hospitality, maybe trying to impress. Well, with Jesus in the house, wouldn't you? Martha, she got busy. Maybe she got busy to be one up on her sister. And sisters and brothers can be like that too. Maybe just to get things ready out of respect for Jesus. Maybe all of these reasons, maybe likely not consciously aware of many of them. Martha, though, is not too busy to notice that her sister is doing nothing. Mary is just sitting there. So Martha comes to Jesus and says, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help out. Now, you might have thought that Martha would have quietly asked her sister to help out. That would have made more sense rather than telling someone else about it. But no, Martha tells Jesus to tell Mary that people are saying that you should be helping out. In fact, Martha is also a bit mad at Jesus. Did you get that? Lord, do you not care? Don't you see it that I'm doing all the work here and my sister isn't? The text continues. Jesus answered her, Martha, Martha. I love that piece. My mother used to say, Sydney, Sydney. And I knew I was about to be corrected. I also knew that I was being loved. Martha, Martha. Listen to Jesus' words sounding to the church gathered that day. Martha, Martha. Sydney, Sydney. <laughs> Joanna, Joanna. Peter, Peter. You are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. You know how once in a while someone will say someone, something in a room and the room suddenly just goes quiet, right? Just goes quiet, fully attending to what's just been said. I wonder if that's what happened in Martha's kitchen. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. That's all he said to Martha's kitchen, to all of us gathered there. Peter, James, John, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Susanna, the whole church gathered around the story then and now is still listening. What does the story say to me and to you in the midst of the events of my life in this moment, to our church in this time in the summer of 2022? And the story, like most stories, like most sacred stories, certainly doesn't tell you what it means. It ends right there but it is nonetheless full of meaning. Though it may take different turns for you and for me, and it may take different turns next year and the year after, depending what's happening in our lives. But let me unpack what I hear in the text this morning. I do hear the story speaking of summer holidays that are, that are happening. It's been a busy year, hasn't it? It's been a year when, when it seems like We've worked hard. I don't think we've necessarily accomplished much, but we've worked hard because every time we plan something, the pandemic rises up and we have to pivot and do it differently. It's been a tiring year for so many of us. Pandemic weary, I think. It has been a thoroughly distracting year. This summer seems to be the first time when we are called to set down the complexities of the last few years to take some time in the quietness to do some camping this summer, maybe. Take some time to make a fire and look into it in the silence for a long time, like you do when you camp. Time to work in the garden or to fish or to read at the cottage. Whatever activity gives you some space to slow down enough to hear God speaking. To be still and know that there is God. 
I do hear the story speaking too as we gather back to worship after two years of meeting virtually. It is so important to just be still and know that there is God, to be still and listen to music, to be still and sing the music, to be still and receive the bread and wine, and to be still and listen to the readings, and for a moment to know the presence of God among us again. I know, there are other stories to be told about the importance of serving God and getting to work. There's many of them. In fact, the story of Mary and Martha comes just before the gospel text from last Sunday, the story of the Good Samaritan. But today, at least, on this day, on this week, I'd invite you to sit at the feet of Mary in Martha's kitchen, to sit at the feet with Mary in Martha's kitchen and listen. Let me close, though, with this. After my father passed away, I was gifted with a, with a very familiar book. It was his personal Bible. I have to admit, I, I can't use it. It's a King James Bible. The language is just outside of the language that I would use. On the other hand, it always speaks to me when I look through it. It's an old Bible. Its, it's pages are yellowed in many cases. Some of the pages are missing, especially the pieces that he loved the most, that he looked at the most. It is underlined everywhere, and there are notes in the margins about places he's been and people he heard speak. And the cover is the most amazing thing because it's leather. And while it may have one day, one day it may have been a kind of a, a stiff, hard leather, now, now it's soft. It's soft from, from wear and from devotion and from sitting at the feet of Jesus day by day by day for a lifetime. So I invite you to hear the text again this morning from, from the Gospel of Luke, Mary and Martha, and listen to the story this morning for what it says to you in the middle of your life in the middle of the life of your church in this moment. Listen to what the Spirit of Jesus continues to speak to the followers of Jesus as we hang on every word for a lifetime. Amen.